What's up, Buck Dougaldini in the garage? I'm sitting in my new daily driver. I sold the Cherokee. A kid in town bought it. He's going to school to be a mechanic. Uh, he's um, really into Jeeps. He wants. This is going to be his first Jeep. He's like 16 years old. So little Buck went to a good home. Again, I didn't sell him for any reason. I just wanted to get something different, which is what I did. This right here, this Jeep right here is a 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ with the 4.7. Now that is new to me. I've never owned a 4.7. Um, I still have my other Grand Cherokee with the 4 liter. Eric still has his ZJ with the 4 liter. So there's still going to be plenty of 4 liter videos, but I wanted to be able to fold in some 4.7 content. So here we go. 4.7 Limited. This Jeep right here, I want to tell you a little bit about it today. Uh, for the purpose of introducing it to the channel so that we can kind of figure out what you guys want to see me do with this thing so we can get some good videos. Let's go through the good, the bad, and the ugly on this Jeep I just purchased. Let's start inside. Good, bad, and ugly inside. All right, uh, the good is that this thing is loaded. I, I got the build sheet for it. It literally has every option imaginable. Uh, it's got the smokers group. It's got the cold weather group. It's got the luxury group. So that means we've got the uh, dual zone uh, climate, which is something I've always wanted. Uh, it's got the uh, memory seats, again, something I've always wanted. Uh, it's got the fancy door panels with the courtesy light there. I know that sounds dumb, but I am a WJ guy. I know more about WJs than any other vehicle on the planet, and I've studied all these features, but I never actually had a Grand Cherokee with any of them, so I'm pretty excited. This is top of the line, man. 2001 WJs, they don't get any nicer than this. You can kind of see Leather seats are in great shape. ZJ seats are the most comfortable Jeep seats ever, but this style of WJ seats are a very close second. You see, I already got the kids, uh, uh, whatchamacallit in there, the uh, car seat in there. It has the sunroof, which is a feature that I don't particularly uh, care about, but the kid loves it. She likes to look out the window there. It's even got the uh, home entry. That's for the garage doors. Now, I've never been able to get that to work, but I intend to on this Jeep. Uh, it's got heated seats that actually work. I've had <laughs> plenty of WJs and the heated seats don't work. I think this is part of the smokers group as well. If you didn't have the smokers group um, feature, you just have a hole here, but this is the ashtray. Let's see what else does she have. Um, as far as the good goes, the best thing about this Jeep, the hands down best thing is, wait for it, right there man, 111,000 miles. To a guy like me, this thing's basically fresh off the lot. Uh, I haven't owned a Jeep, I haven't bought a Jeep with less than 150,000 miles, I don't think ever. My last one I got at 160, I got a couple around 170 and 80, so this thing's just a baby. Uh, I dig it, it's very clean inside. I also love the tan interior. Uh, I'm a big fan of tan interiors. Um, and this one is real clean, real complete. It's got the Infinity Gold sound system. And to go with that, and this is the most important thing, it still has the stock head unit. Don't mind this thing, that's for the camera. Um, it still has the stock head unit. I hate when people take an Infinity Gold sound system and then they swap in a Pioneer Go uh, friggin' Walmart head unit and they screw up the sound system on these things, you know? This is a super capable sound system. You know what you gotta get? I know you're saying my aux cable, my aux cable. Get one of these, leave the sound system stock and get this little guy, it's the uh, Bluetooth thing. As soon as I get in the Jeep, it connects with my phone, done and done. Uh, so that's the good on the inside. It's super clean and it's exactly what I want. Exactly, tan interior, leather, all this, heated seats, everything works. Uh, as for the bad on the inside, um, I don't love this steering wheel, it's a little bit worn out. It's actually really cold. All the, the leather's stretched here, so your hand is right on the metal. It's February in uh, New Jersey, so that's been a little cold. Uh, actually, I wanna try to find an Overland steering wheel. Though I don't know if I can find one with tan here. I don't know. I have to look. Um, the brake pedal seems to be worn out. I mean, that's there's really not much to nitpick here. So <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm mentioning dumb stuff. There's no ugly on the inside. Everything works. Everything's good. Uh, these memory seats are already giving me a little bit of trouble. I know everybody has a problem with these. I'm going to see what I can do to get them figured out. They go... They don't always go up again when I start the Jeep on, but that's whatever, who cares? Um, like I said, no real ugly inside. Let's get outside, do the same thing. All right, as far as the good goes outside, the color is a big deal to me. I really hate silver and uh, gray vehicles, and my last couple Jeeps were all silver and gray. It's just the way it worked. Um, so I'm real happy with the red. Uh, we're already thinking of cranberry-related nicknames for it. Um, 
everything works man no major like accident damage lights work bumpers aren't cracked up or anything real big thing about the outside and the mechanics of the jeep quadra drive i wanted one with quadra drive for those that do not know that means that it has uh, 373 gearings on a Dana 44A with a uh, Verilock limited slip in the back and 373 gearing on a Dana 30 with Verilocks in the front and then it's got the uh, NV247 transfer case which is a center um, progressive limited slip transfer case so this Jeep you can has true four-wheel drive when you have open differentials and an open center transfer case like the 242 you're really like two wheel drive. One wheel on the front and one wheel on the rear is gonna be uh, rocking. But not this thing, this thing beast. We're gonna come back to the transfer case in a little bit. As you can see, everything's pretty clean. Uh, I wouldn't mind finding Laredo headlights that have the black um, inside there, but that's a, that's a small thing. Let's look under the hood. As I mentioned, 111,000 miles. So it's pretty clean under here. Real clean, considering uh, you can see like the brake lines, that's what they look like under the vehicle too. It's crazy, man, for a Jeep that spent its life up in the north. This thing's from Connecticut. All right, that must be where she came from. I figure it came down here on a, um, uh, probably from an auction. Had to be, because I, I got it pretty inexpensively. I didn't pay a ton for this thing. Um, that's about it for the good on the outside. The good is that it's got everything I want. Um, no tow hooks on this limited, but that's okay because I'm going to hook up my plow setup and there's going to be a front hitch there anyway. doesn't have a rear hitch either or the tow package, um, but I have a hitch from my last Jeep. It does have the uh, power steering cooler though uh, because it has a hydraulic fan, so that's really the only thing that the tow package had that uh, it's going to need. Let's go on to the bad on the outside. It's got some rust. This fender's rusty. Uh, the other side's all bubbled up as well. That's fine. I'll find one of these in the junkyard. Take both the fenders. Done. Rockers back here have a little bit of rust. No problem. Um, I might try to grind them because it's not rotted yet. It's just rusty. I may try to grind them out. Uh, and if I can't grind them out, it, it I'll just, um, I don't know, maybe weld in some rock slider looking things. Uh, also, and this happens all the time up in the north. The other northern jeepers can back me up. Your, um, I don't know if you guys can see that, the uh, gas tank skid rots out there. That's no problem. You find one in the junkyard, done and done. I've always wanted to do a video on a tank tuck. I did a tank tuck on that WJ. Uh, so this may get a tank tuck when I find one. Um, the only ugly, oh, the other bad is these rims, man. WJ guys, you know, they made the WJ for, uh, what, five years, 99 to 04. They used 13 different style of rims in those years. These are what's known as the uh, Silver Blade 2s. I had the Silver Blade 1s on my last WJ. I don't remember what these are called, but those are possibly my favorite WJ wheels tied with the um, Silver Blade 1s. These are ugly as hell, but whatever, man. Who cares? The only ugly, the only real ugly was the radiator. Had a huge radiator leak. Uh, pissing coolant everywhere. You guys actually saw me try to patch this thing. This is the old one. I replaced it yesterday There is a video coming on that you guys saw me try to patch this in uh, a different video The crack was too big though. It wasn't meant to be so the only thing I had to do to this thing before I could drive it was Place the radiator that cost a hundred bucks and about two hours of time done and done uh, Everything else is good to go. It doesn't need anything uh, Just some things that we may want to do um not thinking about much of a lift. Neither of us have ever owned a 4.7, but his brother owned a 4.7, Eric's did. So he knows a couple little mods we can do, maybe try to get some more power out of this thing. Definitely try to squeak a couple more miles per gallon out of it. You don't buy a 20 year old V8 expecting to get good miles per gallon, and I am okay with that. But if there's some little things we can do, maybe we will. Uh, other than that, man, I'm just gonna drive it. I'm gonna enjoy it. It's, it's so clean and it's so complete and it's so much my dream WJ. My dream WJ would be, uh, it'd be an Overland. I've always wanted an Overland, that blue, you know. Um, oh, the other thing, the other thing that's cool about this, even though it's a 2001, it has, um, you can't really see, it has Akebono brake calipers, which are the good calipers uh, for WJs. If you have any questions about that, I have a little video on the different calipers they put on WJs, card up in the corner there. Um, there's not much else to say about it. Let's go back inside and wrap this up. All right, so there it is. Uh, this is the new daily. You're going to be seeing a lot of this vi uh, vehicle. I know that this wasn't an informational video, uh, but I felt the need to uh, give a, a prologue to 
why the XJ is not here anymore, what this thing is, what my vision for it is. I definitely want to know from you guys who have 4.7s or maybe don't have 4.7s and just have WJs or, or whatever else, some things that you think I should do to this or could do to this, possible mods. I already off the bat, uh, I don't think I want to keep the 247 transfer case. It is a good transfer case. It's very capable, but I love the 242. I like having rear wheel drive uh, for towing and just in general. So uh, that's probably a swap. Swap out the 247, put in a 242. I'd like to find a way to do the hydraulic fan out and bring in an e-fan, but I'm not sure how to do it and not mess up the computer. Um, like I said, some other little things. You guys let me know, man. I've never had a 4.7. I don't know. What are some cool things that you can do? Junkyard swaps. There's something out there about a you buy a GM throttle body and it fits right on there. And it, it's a bigger throttle body. So that'd be cool if there's some way to make that work. I don't know. Um, yeah. So uh, that's about it. Let me know what you think down there in the squawk boxes. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.